Hello everyone, this is Greg Flyshaker, Greg Fly to my friends, and today I'm making a quick video about a glass blowing class I just went to at Corning Museum, and that is a Merletto vase. Merletto means lace in Italian, and I took a class by Davide Salvadore right there with the white hat, black shirt, and that is his assistant for the week, Kenneth Gonzalez in the black shirt, black hat, and they made um, this vase, a Merletto vase, which is now sitting on my uh, bookshelves. But there are many steps involved. I just wanted to make a quick video about all these different steps. So the first piece, first step is to make your white cane, just plain white cane. And so they got a piece of white glass, color bar, put clear glass over it and pulled it out. And then this is another assistant, Pino. And you take that white cane, you cut it up in little pieces, and this is alternating white, clear, white, clear, white, clear. And then you pick that back up on clear glass. So you, obviously you can't do it right away because it's still too hot. So you have to wait a few hours, come back, do the next step. And now they're going to pull this pattern out, the white, clear, white, clear pattern. And watch how much you have to twist to get the desired effect. So you have to make sure your heat's right. Watch where it's pulling out a little thin right there. So you're going to hit it with some cool air just to help cool it down. And you just sort of walk backwards, spinning, 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 so that those white pieces of cane spin around the exterior of your clear cane and you end up with um, sort of a white twisted, not sort of, a white twisted cane that looks just like that. And then you take these pieces of cane, again you got to let it cool down, and you cut those into six inch, however long you want, pieces. And you can see here they're arranged and you get it hot again, but hot enough to stick to each other, not so hot that it melts into a puddle. So you can see it's got a little bend to it but it's not stuck to the shelf. And Davide is going to pick that up on a clear bubble now. So he's actually making the Merletto vase now. The Merletto is the pattern and he's gonna get it situated just right. So you'll notice he didn't close the gap there when he picked it up. He comes back, make sure it fits right so that you can't really tell where the seam is and where he picked it up. And um, that's Kenneth just brushing some of the dust off from that white shelf, from the kiln wash from that shelf. And so he's going to heat this back up and get it shaped right. And then after he's gotten it nice and symmetric and smoothed in here, he's going to go into a, it's a kind of an optic mold. It's called a fin mold, which will sort of, you'll see it here in just a second, push part of the glass in and let some of the glass come further out. So those ridges all have that color on it, right? So now he's going to twist, twist the ridges. So he's applying pressure using torque on the, that's the marver, and twisting, and now that you can see now where the cane is sort of doubled over on itself, and so the pattern goes from um, sort of really symmetric and um, predictable to much more of an organic, less predictable, and that's what makes it the Merletto. And so that's the Merletto technique, and now you can make it a, any shape that you want. Uh, that you're capable of. And so Davide is going to make a, I showed a picture of in the beginning, it's going to have a, a tapered and an angular foot with a really long sort of a needle nose top. So he is working on the foot first. So the right hand, his right hand, that's towards the foot of the piece and then eventually he'll turn it over and the piece that's on the pipe right now, the, the part of the glass that's attached to the pipe is actually going to be the mouth of the piece. So you shape it up backwards and he's tapering with his jacks where he wants the base to be a little bit narrower and he'll come back and use right now he's using his newspaper and gravity see how Kenneth was holding it up so you get the heat on it correct correctly um, it'll actually draw out as you hold the other end up so he's he's creasing in uh, just a crisper line here making sure that his uh, silhouette is how he wants it to be and he's going to flatten up the bottom and Kenneth will bring him a, a punty so that he can turn the piece over and start working on the mouth once he's satisfied with uh, how it's shaped up here on the, the bottom half. So that's kind of where it is before he turns it over. You can see that you can use the torch to heat up uh, pieces that aren't getting enough heat in the glory hole or if you need a little bit extra heat here or there you can use the torch. So Kenneth has brought the punty and that needs to be strong enough to hold the piece while you're working it, but at the same time it needs to have a break off point so that when you're done with the whole piece it can break off from the punty. So Davide is getting ready to um, put a little bit of water there on the neckline 
and then he'll pop that off and start working on the mouth of the piece. And again, you're going to work on the silhouette, make sure it's shaped up like you want it. Right, so okay, there's the transfer, it's turned over. He's going to use some tweezers here just really quickly and he pulled on the mouth and that's sort of to elongate it and to thin it out at the same time. And now he's using the jacks and the torch and he'll also use his newspaper to again set the silhouette, get this, and you'll see the shoulder gets really defined here. It's going to be more defined through these moves than it was before. And at the same time he wants all that heat in the mouth and the neck so that he can really draw that neck out but he wants the shoulder to, to sit put. So again it's, it's a real delicate balance about getting your heat where you want it and not getting your heat where you don't want it. Easier said than done. And then that's the pun. You got to make sure that stays warm enough that it doesn't crack and break off. So in the next move or two he's going to really draw that neck out. He really set his shoulder there. It's really nice and crisp. And that's Pinot. He's got a puffer or Sofietta in helping uh, with the exterior by putting some more air, some air pressure in there. And then you can see he really drew that line out. And on the very right hand side you can see it's sort of a, a flare. He knocked the flare off of the piece. It's still there. He's going to knock that off and then just fire polish uh, the mouth of the piece. And then it's he decided it's done. And that means it's time to put it away in the annealer so it can come down slowly over probably 15-16 hours. Um, and that's Pino who preheated his glass. We didn't shock the glass, putting the Merletto vase away in, in an annealing oven. And that'll take, like I said, like 15 hours, 16 hours to come down from 900 degrees to room temperature. And there you go. That's what it looks like, a Merletto vase by Davide Salvadori.